Good morning, everybody. Lovely to have you here to this live stream via my YouTube channel. This is Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board, and I will be demonstrating something rather exciting for you in just a second. Now, you might be watching me live on YouTube. You might be watching me via catch up on YouTube, but you also might be watching me on my blog. However it is you're interacting with this broadcast, thank you very much for taking the time to tune in and uh, thank you very much for your support. Now, this is just a reminder that if you do follow me on social media and I am all over social media, you can just uh, look for the at Ali board artist wherever you go would you be kind enough to just give me a follow or to uh, subscribe or to uh, apply for notifications or any of those kind of things simply because it really really helps it helps to get me seen and for the most part it helps to keep broadcasts like this one which is completely free you don't need to pay anything or contribute anything to this it helps to keep them free and uh, it means that my name gets seen out there pass it on to people that you know pass it on to people who you uh, interact with in your artistic communities now if you are watching this live on youtube then please do feel free to chat to each other in that chat facility depending on your device will depend on a way you can see that but I'm just glancing across to my right because I can see that lots of people are already taking part in the chat I'm going to wave good morning to all of those people who are watching me live right now you'll see my eyes dot about the screen because uh, I could bring in aircraft to be perfectly honest with the amount of tech and bits of paper that I've got uh, to remind me what to say and when to say it but I can see that uh, lots of you are not only saying good morning to me uh, but are saying good morning to each other too, which is fantastic. I love that sense of the art community that we have. Now, if you want to find out more about this broadcast in terms of what the materials I'm going to be using and the resources that I'm going to be using, then there is a special place to go. And you need this address, which is www.learningtopaint.co.uk. And let me share with you, I know that most of you know this. I know and I know it's a, a bit repetitious for some of you. But just in case you are new to us, this is the place that you need to go for all your resources. So let's pop you over to that website and I'll show you exactly where it is that you need to go. So the website might look a little bit different to you when you look at it on your device. You might be looking at it on a smartphone or a tablet, in which case you probably won't see that row of words across the top where it says home and Alison Seaboard and learning to paint. That might be uh, three little parallel lines which you just need uh, to click on, um, uh, but the one that you are going to need is this one, which is my blog. Now I blog about all sorts of things on a regular basis, but look, there is Technique Tuesday for May, and it says read more underneath, so that is exactly what we're going to do. And what I do is that I give you a little bit of background information as to what uh, we're doing today. Now, as you can see, the theme of the month this month is experimental portraiture. Now, portraiture is uh, a pretty new thing for me. It's not something that I do on a regular basis. It's not a subject that I find that comes easily to me. So I am challenging myself as well as all the rest of you. Here is the photograph that I am going to be working from. It was found on a royalty free site and I've given you the link there. You see it says download the photo here so that you can print it out and have a go at this yourself. And then here is all of the equipment. Now I have been pretty thorough. I have kind of gone down really to the, the last uh, plastic tray and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there are links there for you to follow. Now it does need to be said that these are what is known as affiliate links. And what an affiliate link is, is that if you click on one of those and you end up purchasing something via that link, then I get a tiny, tiny, tiny little kickback. And it just goes towards helping me to keep these broadcasts free to all. And there's a whole range of things. Now, you do not need to replicate everything to be able to do this painting very successfully indeed. 
All that I have done there is to give you the link to everything that I've going, I'm going to be using. Some of the things you might not have heard of before, some of the things you're going to find around your house and some of the things uh, you might need to invest in. And if you do want to watch this on catch up, then you will see just a bit further down. It says the broadcast in full. You might even be watching via that link right now. So there's plenty there uh, for you to enjoy in terms of understanding where the resources are. So you can go and have a go at this project yourself, too. Now, do I need to say anything else? So uh, let's uh, talk about that theme of the month, uh, experimental portraiture. I called it experimental because I didn't want to tie myself to something incredibly specific. The, just the general theme of portraiture is it's specific enough for me. Um, I've done a lot of life drawing in my time and I really enjoyed life drawing, particularly what we would call spirit of the pose. So there's kind of very quick, very gestural types of mark making. I find the rules of portraiture to be slightly overwhelming. Animals, not a problem. Fox, badger, rabbit, chicken, you name it. I am good with that. But actually human faces are something that I struggle with. So this month, not only am I challenging all the rest of my classes, so the All Aboard artists have got lots of challenges there uh, in terms of a bit of tuition on demand. And uh, actually, if you're watching this live on the 9th of May tomorrow, the All Aboard artists are actually going to be tackling a Klimt portrait. And I'm very excited about that. Not simply because it just contains a lot of metallic gold, but uh, just because it's going to be an interesting one. And we've got live online workshops and we've got workshops in person, all of which are going to tackle something really quite specific. So uh, I thought today I would try to make it a little bit easier for myself in terms of tackling a portrait that's in silhouette. And I thought it would give me an ample opportunity to combine two materials, which I combine very, very often in my work, and that is pastel and gouache. So let me take you to the overhead camera and you'll see what I've got set up in front of me. Oh, we'll get cracking, shall we? So here we go. <clears throat> Here's my setup. I've got everything in front of me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the materials as we go along. But here I've got my resource. I've got it printed out just on cheap copier. Normally I print it out in black and white. I just forgot to hit the black and white um, button before I printed it. So I've got that in colour and I've got a much better photographic reference there too. Now, when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, this will be all right. This will be easy. And then actually, when I started to have a look at it, I realised what a challenge it was going to be. So follow me along for the ride, won't you? Because uh, this is going to be something that I don't normally tackle. Before I uh, get to my transfer, let's introduce you to a few bits and pieces that I've got around. Uh, I've got my drawing board here. Now, my drawing board might look unusual, the links to how um, I've got to my drawing board are all in that blog. It is a, a, a drawing board that's on a rest, uh, so that I've got it at a nice slope. It might look flat to you, but to me, it's uh, tilted up ever so slightly. And I've got uh, a piece of metallic, uh, metallic, magnetic sheet underneath so that I can use these magnetic push pins to hold down uh, either my paper or various bits of kit. But I didn't like the magnetic sheet, so I've covered it in much more interesting sticky back plastic and actually boarded it with a bit of washi tape, which I change uh, from time to time because this is the bit that gets dirty and it kind of catches the colour for me. Now, actually, saying all that, the magnetic push pins are not what's holding down my surface today because this is so thick that actually the magnets uh, don't work particularly well. They do stay on but it's not as strong a hold as I would like it. So what am I working on today? <clears throat> this is what I'm working on today. You can see already done a bit of my homework in order to uh, decide on what colours I was going to use. Now this is pastel mat. Pastel mat is a surface that I use very often. It is cork actually. Uh, it feels completely smooth when you run your finger over it, but it's actually got a very deep texture. And what that means is that I can use my chalk pastels on top of it and it's going to hold on to the, that kind of very dusty surface. So uh, this is just the most beautiful thing to work on. Now it comes in paper and it comes in board. I've put the link to both of those things 
on the blog because you might not want the very heavy board you can see can you see uh, how thick it is there now please don't read anything oh why she used board and she hasn't used paper there must be a reason it is simply because i had some of this in my stash um, and i wanted this color which was it which is called anthracite which is the closest you can get to uh, black but i didn't want it black black uh, for reasons which will become uh, apparent during my demonstration uh, and so don't think that you've got to get bored because uh, you need to paint on it or any of those kind of things the paper works as well this is just a much heavier substrate and of course because of that it didn't want to to stay on my board so I've actually taped it down so it's got a bit of um, double-sided tape where well, it's got a bit of um, masking tape wrapped uh, back on itself stuck on the back so that this doesn't go anywhere um, I've got that spare piece just in case I need to test out a colour, as you can see I did when I was trying to decide what uh, pencils to use today, um, or to check a brush stroke or whatever it is. And I'm just going to pop that over to one side uh, <laughs> where there's a space. If you saw my photograph on social media, you'll realise uh, how my desk is full this morning, actually technically full. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this down onto this surface and I'm going to use a transfer technique to do that. Now, ordinarily, I would use trace down. So trace down being that kind of like um, carbon paper style of thing. Um, but I'm not going to use that today. Lots of reasons why I'm not going to use that today. The main one being that even though trace down is uh, free from wax, it has a shiny finish to it. And that means that I would be in trouble if I did my outline uh, of this uh, beautiful soul that we've got here. I would be really concerned that where I wanted there to be a sharp highlight or to be able to get some of this detail in her hair, um, I'm not gonna be able to put it over the top of that trace down without it skipping or missing any of those kind of things. So um, I am going to use a different technique and actually this is a much lower tech technique which is grand because uh, if you don't have trace down or you've never used it this is certainly doable. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this over and uh, I'm going to use a soft chalk pastel to do it. Now this is a unison pastel. Um, and Unison are an incre uh, just incredibly handmade, they're beautiful pastels. Again, it's not necessary for you to absolutely replicate this. Um, it was just a colour, I mean, look at that colour match. That's pretty good, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pastel over the back of where the silhouette occurs. So we'll get that on. I don't need to put an awful lot down. Um, what else do I need? I'm probably going to need a little bit in there too. And then I'm going to use my finger to blend that in. I could flip it over right now and do the transfer just with the, the pastel in this kind of state. But I'm going to end up with an awful lot of dust on my pastel mat. So I'm going to use my finger. You could use a piece of kitchen towel if you wanted, uh, if you didn't want to get your hands messy. I'm just going to push it into the surface. So I'm going to do that one. Now, this is something that you might not have seen me demonstrate before. Look at the state of me already. <clears throat> I'm also going to take a little bit of white and add that to that colour just to lighten it ever so slightly. I'm concerned that that kind of really warm reddish brown isn't going to show up on my um, pastel mat. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of white to lighten the colour before I do the transfer. So let's get that in. I'm hoping that I've got enough down, I think I have. Now I just need to uh, tap off the excess. Now, if you have a um, asthma or any kind of breathing difficulties, please, please, please make sure that you have something damp that you can tap excess into. Don't just tap it into the air. Don't blow it. I mean, I can't do that because you're all in front of me at the moment. I'm gonna just uh, take it over here uh, and you can probably hear that noise where I'm flicking the back of it just to get rid of the dust. Then I'm going to put this uh, pastel side down onto my pastel mat uh, just nice and lightly. Let's uh, pull it down just a little bit. 
And then I'm going to use some washi tape to make a hinge. Now, why am I using washi tape and I'm not using framers tape? I'm using washi tape because uh, Pastel Matte does not like any kind of masking tape. You will mark it. So I'm using washi tape, which is a much lighter, stickier um, in terms of stickiness consistency. Hardly got any adhesion to it at all. So I should be able to peel this away nice and successfully uh, when I've done my transfer. <clears throat> uh, lots of you saying that you get awfully messy when using pastels. Yeah, it's off the fun, isn't it? I've got my old jeans on today. Nearly put a white top on this morning. That would have been a mistake, wouldn't it? Um, it's all going to be fine. Now, I'm using uh, this biro. I use these biros for everything. These are the Pilot Friction biros just because they produce a nice pressure. Um, and I'm going to go around the periphery of my silhouette. Now, when you are tackling human portraits... It is very important that you look at the accuracy of what you're doing. You can't make this up. You can't sort of add a little bit on. You can't go larger than it or um, smaller than it or your head will look out of proportion. So when you do this transfer or when you're looking at portraits generally, you have to be accurate. And this is where certainly I fall down because uh, I quite like inaccuracy in my work. I like to be able to uh, have a bit of freedom with it. So I think that's why I struggle. So I'm going to lift up, make sure that the head is there. So you can see coming through beautifully. It's in pastel. So I know that I'm going to be able to fuzz it, move it, do other things to it, all that kind of stuff. Now she's got a scrunchie in her hair. I am not going to put that in. Why am I not going to put that in? I'm not going to put it in because I think it looks like something is growing out the back of her head. I'm going to enough things to tackle this morning. I don't want to add to them. So I'm going to miss out the scrunchie and I'm going to put in her the start of her ponytail. Um, we've got a little recess here where you can see the back of her neck and the underside of the ponytail. Not going to over describe that. You've got the collar of what it is that she is wearing or the, the sort of neckline, which I'm going to pop in. Then you've got a few folds of fabric coming down. So I'm going to put those in. Those I can make in kind of loose strokes. Let's have a look and make sure that that's coming through OK. Yes, it is. That's grand. can only just about see that, but that's all right. Um, and then I'm going to start with just a few kind of nods. One of the things that really drew me to this portrait was the fact that you see this uh, beautifully backlit hair. It's an incredible photograph uh, and such a privilege to be able to use it. Now, I've got to be careful with the hair that's coming down uh, from her nose. I don't want that. Um, as uh, crass as it seems, I don't want it to look like anything is falling out of her nose. So I'm actually going to continue the hair a bit further down. Uh, I'll have a look at this transfer in a minute and see how we're getting on. That's better. I think I need to join that up a little bit. So I'm having a really good look. So can you see now how it's sort of starting to make sense? Uh, do I need to do anything else? Maybe just a few swishes of this hair coming back here let's have a look at those yeah so all starting to look rather beautiful hopefully now I'm going to peel this very slowly and carefully away from my pastel mat so that it doesn't make a mark and then you can always pop that to one side uh, to be used at a later date let's fold that washi tape over so that uh, it lives to fight another day. Obviously it's covered in pastel, so don't put it down anywhere precious. I'm gonna chuck it on the floor just down here. Uh, as I'm sure you've seen on my social media in the past, usually quite a lot of detritus around my working area as I go along. Now I have some uh, bamboo wipes uh, here to keep my hands clean, but there is uh, a danger with these. If I want to uh, clean my hands off, I can do that. If I want to use those to flick my damp, um, to flick my uh, excess pastel into, I can do. But be very careful with these. What you don't want to do is when you've uh, cleaned your hands off, don't put damp hands back onto this pastel mat because you are in danger of uh, transferring oils or something that you don't want onto there. So uh, just a bit of a kind of care thing. 
Now what I'm going to do is uh, briefly I'm going to work back into this with uh, a pastel pencil just to make sure that I've got everything where I want it to add a few bits and pieces and then we'll get cracking with some paint. Now for this I've got several choices you can see I've got my pastel pencils here and there's a link to the pastel pencils over on that blog post so you can see what I get now I don't use one brand and I've got a right old mixture going on here I've got Faber Castell Pitt I've got uh, Carbothello from uh, Stabilo I've got the Karen Dash ones I've got Derwent um, have I got Conte no I haven't got Conte today but uh, Conte is a, a brand that I use too so not necessarily um, a particular brand that I would recommend it tends to be down to their softness and whether the colour is right. Now for me, uh, Derwent is one of the hardest, so that's going to be great for detail. Um, and Caran d'Ache are the softest, so going to be better for blending out, that kind of thing, and sort of everything in between. I've got far too many colours here. You don't need this many colours. It's simply because this is a live broadcast, I've got to have everything that I possibly can at my fingertips for uh, the duration of the broadcast. I'm going to start off uh, with my favourite drawing back in uh, pastel pencil, which is this one, which is the Stabilo, um, but any of them will do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look very carefully at my reference material and not necessarily go right back over everything that I've done, although I will add detail here and there. I'm looking at the other things that I need to add ready for some painting. And what I can do whilst I am uh, drawing this back in is tell you my intentions in terms of how I intend to interpret this. I'm going to use some gouache. Like I said at the top of the broadcast, gouache and pastel are one of my favourite combinations to use because on pastel mat, pastel mat will take painting really quite well. You're able to uh, paint on this surface. You can combine lots of materials. A lot of um, coloured pencil artists use this. So uh, it has a great history of being able to be painted back into. Now, the reason I particularly like it is because there's quite the link for me between using pastel and using gouache. Pastel to me is like a sort of uh, dry gouache. And gouache is a real illustration tool. It's what I learned to paint on. It's the, the product that uh, when my parents and I had our art business, it was the paint that I was the most attracted to and started to uh, teach myself to paint on. So I have uh, a bit of a sort of uh, affinity with it anyway. Um, and it's very opaque. It uh, creates really interesting flat variations on... Um, my surface, if you're a watercolourist, then you will know white gouache is often used to do any editing towards the end of a painting. So my intention is to use some gouache before I finish off my silhouette with pastel. So as you can see, I'm adding a few little bits here and there. Um, I haven't quite got everything where I want it yet, but I'm mindful of the fact that I've got other things to do to this before I start looking at... Uh, where all the detail is. What I am trying to get in is that sense of uh, her head looking down and uh, those uh, sort of amazing wispy bits that I've got going on, but I don't want to get carried away with that. So I've got it in. Uh, it's on a quite a, a nice place on my pastel mat, so I'm happy with that. So now let's go to the painting. What am I going to be using for the painting? Let's just show you this little dish that I have here. You'll see on the blog um, that uh, this is a very high-tech plastic dish. This uh, was kindly donated by my dog Riley. This is what his uh, breakfast comes in. Um, and they're brilliant. Uh, whilst I can recycle them, uh, they're fantastic for kind of keeping things like this, particularly pastels, which can roll around on your surface and, and get really grubby and dirty. This is what I tend to throw things in. I've got a putty eraser there, just in case I want to do any editing later. Got my little paper stump in there, which I might use for blending. Had those two pastels that I used earlier, my roller washi tape. And here we go, uh, leading on to the gouache. So this is the gouache that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using velvet black. Now, why am I painting black on black paper? I'm going to do that because if you have a look at the photograph, you will see that actually this area of our portrait is much darker 
than what's going on behind it. So I want to be able to paint this in to create some interesting, hopefully blended effects on that. And then I'm going to work with pastel back over the top. Now I already have my gouache squeezed out like this. This is a tinting saucer. This is a ceramic. This is the way I prefer to use the majority of my gouache, certainly my blacks, my greys and my whites, because I'm not going to waste any. Then uh, I can get it. I can get it to a, a nice consistency. You can see it's um, a bit like a sort of a steel drum. It's got a, a concave uh, um, surface and I can squeeze my colour out. I can allow it to dry and then I can just reconstitute it whenever I want. And as you can see, because it's me and I'm horribly organised, um, I've got the velvet black label on it so that I know what's what. Uh, over here I have my SAA Imitation Sable Round Brushes. Just going to clear the decks a little bit because um, I've got stuff everywhere. I've got a pot of water, which you should just see coming into shot. And I'm going to have a good old uh, security blanket over here, which is my piece of kitchen roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a consistency of gouache, which I'm hoping will both cover and allow me the freedom to blend out. Now, ideally, you wouldn't be mixing this over the top of your very precious painting. You'd be doing it somewhere far away. But for the purposes of the demonstration, you need to be able to see what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to mix this uh, into the saucer. Now I coat all the bristles. Why do I do that? I do that because I need it to feed a bit like a fountain pen. If I just put the tip of the bristles in, I'm going to be going backwards and forwards all the time to my painting. So I'm going to pick up a really good amount of paint on my brush. And then I'm going to go into this uh, portrait area and I'm going to use my black. It feels a bit odd under my brush um, and it dries out the surface of my brush really quite quickly. So I have to keep popping my brush either back into the paint or I have to uh, replenish it with a little bit of water. If you do pop your brush back into the water, don't forget that you need to remix this consistency. Otherwise, your paint will get thinner and thinner. Now I'm going to put it down and it's going to look very hard and very solid for a long time. But look at the difference in colour. Look at the difference between the depth of colour in the gouache and the colour of the anthracite pastel mat. So we're carrying on with this. Uh, I'm going to make it relatively uh, flat and solid for the time being. There's other things I plan on doing to soften this. Let's get uh, the nose in. I'm slowing my speech right down as well because if I paint at the same speed that I talk, we're going to be in trouble. So let's get that in. That's better. Now this will dry back. It won't be as uh, dark as it looks at the moment. So don't uh, panic or at least uh, don't panic yet. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just having a look at my photograph and my reference to see where I need to come because at some point I'm going to need to start fading this out uh, certainly uh, on the neck but let's get a little more um, I think we need it to come around here a little bit so I've lightened my pressure on my brush so that I'm using more of the tip and I need to come around into the mouth Let's get that in. Really don't want her to be pulling a face I don't like the look of. And then I'm going to wash my brush out. And uh, I'm going to use some water to fuzz it out. Now, this is the tricky part about using um, gouache, and particularly black gouache, on a black surface, is that you can't necessarily see where you're blending it out because, obviously, the water is making the pastel mat dark as well. So there's an element of trust going on here that it is doing the thing that I want it to do. And the other thing that I've got to keep an eye on, which is what I'm just mopping up here, is the fact that the minute that you make paint thinner on pastel mat, it starts to creep across the surface. It kind of feeds into the um, the texture into that cork texture so you don't really want to go too far with it it's just starting to creep there you can probably see in the camera as you can see in the camera just little kind of uh, fleck style marks but it'll be all right I can 
rescue it back with the pastel. So we want uh, we want the back of her neck to be in as well. This is the bit that I'm actually really unsure about in my portrait. And I'm going to blend it out down to that neckline. Because looking at my photograph, it's dark. And then it gets a bit paler and then it goes dark again. So to be able to see what I've got and to make sure that I've got things in the right place. Oh, what I've got to do is uh, dry this off. And I want to see, I want you to see what happens to this gouache as it dries. So uh, this is it when it's wet. Now just uh, have a good look at it as it starts to dry. So there it goes. You can see it getting much, much paler. So did you see that? It sort of chased its way along the uh, surface. So now what I've got is some nice uh, fuzzed out bits here. And uh, what I'm going to need to do is to add a little bit of extra black over here for the, the collar coming down. And I need to do that blending out all over again. So let's uh, tackle that bit. So brush back into the water. Let's mix up another nice consistency of gouache. You know when it's right. Can you see that it's sort of sticking to my palette there? Kind of really coating it. Uh, very uh, kind of glossy and uh, delicious is the only way of describing that consistency of paint. So let's get uh, the dark collar in here. Let's get a nice tidy edge in for where this piece of material Kind of comes across on the neck. I'm going to use uh, the tip of the brush to get the nice kind of fine details. And I've been a bit mean with a ponytail. I was wondering what was wrong with that ponytail. I've been a bit mean with it um, and so I think it needs to be uh, a bit thicker. So I'm going to extend that out. I can break that up with some pastel later on. So let's get uh, something that doesn't look quite right about that. I think it's because because this needs to cut in a bit higher. So I'm looking at the shapes in my photograph all the time, making sure that I get everything where I want it to be. Uh, coming down into the fabric uh, this way. Now, if you are watching, whilst I, I finish this, if you are watching this uh, live on YouTube, then uh, please do leave me a question or uh, make a comment. I can see lots of you chatting to each other. If you're watching this on catch up, do leave me a little comment on uh, YouTube too. I try very hard to always go back and uh, read them and acknowledge them. If you're watching this on my blog, then there is a comment section for that too. Always never be afraid uh, to leave me a little question or a comment. I will always do my very, very best to get back to you. So let's continue this ponytail. Now, I don't I don't want to do everything that's uh, going on down here. I just want to sort of fuzz it out. And I think this is probably a good opportunity to do that. So once again, giving my brush a really good uh, wash out and using the water to pull that paint further down. I, I don't need to describe the bottom of this uh, silhouette. I think that it kind of speaks for itself. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to use that uh, dry brush stroke to fuzz out the ends of the paint that I've got going on just to sort of not over describe it really. I hate uh, being too prescriptive with my work. Let's do the same for her hair. Let's pull that down. This imitation sable brush doing a brilliant job of it, as always. And I think that is going to be enough. Maybe I should do a little bit more with this. But uh, because we're um, a little bit pushed for time today, I'm not going to over describe that. What I am going to do is dry this off.
So I can see that a question has come in from Hilary. Hilary, thank you very much for your question. Her question is, my set of gouache has ivory black. Would this be any good? Absolutely, Hilary. Um, ivory black is a brown black, as opposed to some of the other blacks which are blue blacks. That doesn't make it better or worse. That just makes it a different version. So, yeah, have a go with the ivory black. See how you get on with it. I'd love to see the results. Um, if you if you like to share your work on social media, then please just tag me in it. Just tag at the at symbol Ali Board Artist, all one word. Um, so uh, do uh, tag me in those things because I always like to see what you've been up to as well. So there we have the gouache all in. Quite pleased with that. It's all. It's not too bad, is it? Uh, I'm very nervous about doing this today because obviously portraits are not a thing that comes naturally to me. So um, I just uh, I wanted to do something that I was pleased with at the end, which is always a challenge, isn't it? Right. Let's go back to this unison pastel colour. Now I need to make a bridge between what is going on here on the uh, actual silhouette and what is going on in the background. It's too harsh. A separation at the moment and one of the things I loved about this picture uh, was the the transition from uh, black to the sort of warm color now uh, Trudy is asking a question good morning Trudy if you are unfortunate enough to get a watermark over the edge of your drawn line is there a way to rescue it so Trudy what I think you mean by that is uh, if it kind of uh, goes over the edge and you end up with a, a silhouette that's got a funny looking nose what you can do is what I'm about to do. So what I'm about to do is to go back in with pastel and uh, like I said, build a bridge between this and uh, the silhouette to kind of soften it a little bit and to give it that kind of warmth. And that is one of the reasons why I love using pastel with gouache on pastel matte paper because it's a brilliant editing tool. I hope that makes uh, sense. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to lose some of the hair that I put in as I do this, but that's OK. I can always put it back in. I don't want to overdo this. I'm going to block this in for the time being. Now, where else do I need it? I'm actually going to put it in that little gap, although I don't need an awful lot of it. Uh, I'm going to add some over the top of the head. Now, if this pastel goes into the uh, silhouette itself that is not a bad thing looks like she's got a very flat head at the moment i can bring that back um i'm just all i'm trying to do is like i said create uh, a bridge lovely trudy I'm, I'm glad that makes sense uh let's put some warmth uh, right in front of her face this is a risky thing to do because i've just chopped the end of her nose off for no other reason um i'm going to soften it in a minute so don't uh, don't panic yet. Panic in a little bit. But don't panic yet. Uh, let's pull uh, some of that colour down. And I'm going to break up some of these marks as well. So that we get more of a sense of uh, backdrop to her. Rather than uh, a particular shape. So there we've got that going on. And let's pull some of that colour down into here too. Now I need to blend this, I need to soften it, I need to uh, make sure, I'm just putting some, can you see she's got that lovely sort of reddy brown uh, in the back of her neck. Um, I need to make sure that this is a, a finish that I like. Now you can use your finger, but I wouldn't recommend it. This stuff, whilst it feels smooth to the touch, is highly abrasive. And uh, you can actually do quite a lot of damage to your fingers. Apart from that, if you start to blend it with your finger, then the danger is that you're going to put oils or anything that you've got on your hands, like cream or any of those kind of things, back into your picture. And you don't want that. So I'm going to use this, which is a paper stump. And uh, paper stumps work brilliantly because they smudge and they blend uh, and they do all of the hard work for you. So I'm going to pull this colour over the top and uh, I'm going to use my putty eraser in a minute to kind of take care of some of the ends. So we've got that lovely kind of warmth coming in. I'm mindful that my strokes that I make with my paper stump 
need to be ordered they need to be kind of up and down there's a couple of them that are a little bit diagonal which uh, if you know me well you'll know I don't do diagonals don't like diagonals at all that's not an artistic thing that's an aesthetic thing that is peculiar to me in so many ways but look at that so now can you see she's sort of appearing and disappearing which uh, I really like that was exactly what I wanted and the pastel goes over the top of the gouache um, the, where the gouache is on the pastel mat it kind of treats it very similarly so you've got materials that are working together really well that are sympathetic to each other so we'll do that so again can you see now I've got that sort of fuzzy that uh, push pull that I look for in my work all the time um, and then what you get is a nice combination between lost and found and I talk about it at length in my classes it's the jackpot for me it's wanting there to be some detail but not too much it's wanting fuzzy edges as well as really kind of harsh edges that describe detail and it is the thing that I strive for all the time so uh, working my way I'm rushing this if you're doing this take more time over it than I have I am uh, seriously rushing it in terms of this being a broadcast if I was doing this as uh, one of my pre-recorded tutorials I would spend a lot longer I would probably use a bit of time lapse uh, to get through the uh, repetition of it uh, but for today for the purposes of this demonstration that is all fine and dandy now if you want to clean one of these that is what the fine sandpaper is for if it all gets a bit clogged up then uh, your fine sandpaper will clean off your paper stump really quite easily the other thing that i tend to do is that i fold it over and i move it backwards and forwards look at that clean and able to be used again now one more thing I'm going to do to this before I go back in and start work on her is I've got an old brush this is a brush that I have been particularly mean to um, it's one of my old acrylic painting brushes this is actually an SAA silver brush you can see that's not really going to be of use to anybody to create anything with any detail on it but it is great for going in and upsetting pastel so you can go in and you can sort of take the edges off things by smudging it around and you'll see that you get a dust. So again, if you suffer from any breathing difficulties at all, make sure you're working in a well ventilated area or um, I mean, we have masks a go go. There was a time when I used to say wear a mask to paint and everyone used to think I was mad. But now we're sort of used to that, aren't we? So uh, pop one of your old COVID masks back on because then it will mean this is pure pigment. So there is a danger that uh, if you're not careful with it, you're going to inhale it. So just be mindful of these things. Let's go back in and let's sort of smudge it around. I get that kind of nice misty look going on then. Now I need to get rid of that dust. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to carefully oh, peel this off the backing board. I'm going to pop my um, uh, hand wipe in there. And I'm going to tap this. My drawing board is about to fall, but it'll be all right. If I tap it into that baby wipe, then you can see I've uh, I can pick up all the extras. I'm also just off camera going to turn it upside down and bash the back of it so that it gets rid of the dust. Why do I want to get rid of the dust? I want to get rid of the dust so that I don't continue to smudge it. So let's uh, stick this back down again so you can see. Now I'm going to do a little tiny bit of work uh, back in with my uh, putty eraser and I treated myself to a new putty eraser for this uh, broadcast. Don't read anything into the fact that this is yellow. Um, it was just because when I uh, went to order some new ones there was a choice between colours or grey and I thought oh I'll do something a bit different. So now I'm going to go back in with my putty er eraser and I'm going to just chip away some of the marks that I've made so that it doesn't end up all being terribly even. You can uh, see that I'm lifting pastel off. Might not be terribly evident uh, for the camera, but it's certainly adding to the subtlety 
of what I've done in the background. I also need to lift it a little bit away from the gouache so that uh, I want her to be uh, kind of ethereal. I don't want her in a fog. Um, and this isn't the end of this putty eraser. What you do is you knead that extra colour uh, into the, the depths of your putty eraser and, uh, and then it lives to fight another day. So let's uh, pull some of this away. Uh, I am, you know, never always do as I say, not as I do. I am getting my finger involved again, of course. <laughs> uh, and I need to knock back just a little bit of this. You can also do this with kitchen roll. Let's show you uh, that technique. Not necessarily a damp bit of kitchen roll. You can do it with a dry bit of kitchen roll. You can go back in with it wrapped around your finger and you can also kind of lessen the effect so that you can get it much more subtle. See some of my white lines are reappearing now, which is good. Let's uh, just, no, definitely need the eraser for this bit. Going back in, just kind of lightening it here and there, picking some of it away so that I get, again, I get that kind of nice push pull going on. So I think that's all uh, done now. Now I'm going to work back into her with my pastel pencils. So these are the finishing touches. Now where's my black? Black is where I want to start because I want to start reclaiming some of the edges here and there. Now I could go back in with a gouache if I wanted to, but I don't want to because I want it to be more controllable than that and a bit more subtle than that. What I am going to need is I'm going to need my paper stump to get that pastel blended in, back in to the surrounding. So can you see how I can reclaim parts of her? Don't want to do it all because uh, I don't want it to go back to being uh, very bright again, or very um, solid, I should say. Uh, where else do I need to reclaim some of it? I think down here where the um the lines that i made uh, horizontally are uh for the background but actually the line of her hair kind of cuts across a little bit more on a diagonal which i don't like the irony so let's pull that back down and then i want to reclaim this edge here at the edge of the material so that that starts coming back in a bit more my pastel pencil working over the top of that gouache really rather well very pleased with that so let's i'm uh, doing a bit of smudging there where else do i want that oh now do i do uh, i'm scared of noses uh, dog noses uh, horse noses uh, even uh, what have i done recently um an ostrich beak those don't fill me with any kind of trepidation at all but a human nose <laughs> <laughs> just it's only um you know recognition isn't it it's only things that you do uh repeatedly if i did more portraits then i would be better at them wouldn't i right that is starting to come together a bit more i can see as well that i need to extend the the line of her hair a bit uh further out and kind of come around the back a bit more i want to get rid of that white line if i can that's better <laughs> and extend uh, this. So as I finish these sort of final touches in the black, before I go to some of the more highlight colours, get those questions in if you are watching this live, or like I said, leave me a comment either on the blog or in the face, um, in the face, in the YouTube comments, and uh, I will try to answer it. Right, that is coming together. Good morning, Ronald. Uh, lovely to have, if you're watching me live, thank you ever so much for taking the time to, to tune in. Um, I really appreciate it. So now I need to start getting this hair in and I need to start getting, I mean, I pulled out all sorts of colors uh, here. I'm not entirely convinced that I'm gonna need all of them, if I'm honest, but uh, what ones am I definitely gonna need? Uh, I'm definitely gonna need that. Definitely going to need that and fairly sure I'm going to need that. So that's where I'm going to start. Now, what are these colours for the purposes of the tape? 
The uh, Carbothello, the Stabilo Carbothello uh, pencils, they only go by colour number, they don't go by name. Um, so this is 642, it's sort of like a light pinkish grey, very good, and this is not relevant, but very good for old dog noses. Uh, this is just plain white, and then this is Derwent's, this is probably the pencil I use the most uh, in the Derwent range, this is Burnt Carmine, and th that is very good for young dog noses to give that kind of pinky effect. Now I'm going to start with uh, this one and what I need to start doing is just breaking up the edge of the hair so that her head isn't too solid a mass. It's a very good colour match as you can see for that unison pastel that I had earlier. Um, I don't want to use a lot of this. All I'm trying to do is to break up some of the edges. Oh, I don't like that. What was I thinking? Looks like she's got a scar. There we go. Um, let's get uh, rid of a few blemishes that we've got. Uh, let's uh, put some of that colour into her neck. I'm going to need my um, paper stump to blend that together a bit more. So we're working on that kind of lovely backlit effect. As you can see, I'm, holding my, I'm not holding my pencil like this. Uh, I'm holding it over the top for two reasons. One is if I have my pencil like this, the chances are I'm going to shove my hand in the background, which I don't really want. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. I just need a quick drink. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and the other reason is that I can make a better mark. If I hold my pencil this and try to sort of sculpt a mark, it'll look too forced. Whereas if I use my pencil over the top, Hopefully what I get is a more realistic looking hairline. I'm going to fuzz out some of the ends of things and I'm going to start to be brave and put some of that uh, hair texture out into the background. This is where I've got to be careful, where uh, it falls across her face but it's starting to, to break all of that up rather nicely too. Let's put a, a little bit going down from the bottom of her chin. This is the place that I anticipate I'm going to have the most trouble to make it look realistic. But you never know. Oh, no, don't do too much to it, Ali. Um, now I'm going to go in with the Burnt Carmine. And uh, so this is a darker. Again, this is a bit of a bridging colour. So it's not as dark as the black that I've got in the gouache. But it's not going to show up as much as that pinky grey that I just used in the uh, Carbothello pencil. So I'm always looking for those in-betweens. The blacks and the whites and the um, real extremes of tone, I think are the easy ones to do. I think it's actually the in-between colours, the, the bits where you're not quite sure where something stops and something starts. I think those are the places that are tricky. I do not like the lines that I've made there, so I'm going to fuzz those out. Mm, don't like those at all. Looks like something is growing at the bottom of her chin. So I might actually deviate from my photograph and uh, tidy that back up again in black because I'm not convinced that I'm going to be able to make that work in white. So do you know what? I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, let's go back in with this dark because I can see that I need to uh, break this up. I think as well I'm going to need to sort of describe why her hair is gathered and where it's gathered. So I think a little bit of dark in there probably will help. I need to get rid of the anthracite colour in there because it's, that's better, it's um, sort of detracting. Uh, I think some extra black is needed in that sort of hair texture to describe it. Again, I don't want to overdo it. I'm so scared of overdoing it. Uh, um, so Lauren, good morning. This is uh, someone who's just commented live in the chat. It's my absolute pleasure making this available. Um, you'd be very welcome if you came over to the UK because I can see you're in South Africa. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in. Awesome to have you here. Awesome to have you all here, no matter where you're watching from. So we'll get these uh, last little bits in, and then we'll... Ooh, it's, it's so close. It's so close. 
Uh, and then we'll go in with the white. Right, deep breath, Ali. Because are you going to need to be brave with this? We're going to need a light touch. We're going to need to not over describe things. We're all we're after is just that sense that there's hair and other things going on. Not sure about that one. Not sure about that one. So let's get rid of it. And there's why we're using pastel today. <laughs> so uh, what I do think I need to do is to use a little bit of white uh, to highlight. Now I have two things, um, two tools near me that I use to sharpen my pastels. I've got what's known as a utility knife. So a little click up knife that I use to sharpen them. And off camera, which uh, you can't actually see because it's clamped to my desk, is my rotary sharpener that uh, I use an awful lot of both of those. There are links over on my blog so that you can see the type of thing that I use. Sometimes I have to put links to uh, much newer products than necessarily I use. So my um, rotary sharpener, for example, is no longer made anymore. So I've put the sort of nearest equivalent in. Whew, that was a dodgy area down there. Right, let's uh, put a nice white highlight coming in here. Coming in over the back, so it's just sort of suggesting the hair. Now, I don't like that those lines are coming out of nothing. So let's blend them in so it looks like they're kind of coming out the, the back of the head. Um, this let's, well, let's deal with this bit, which I'm not sure how is going to uh, work. But we'll do something to address it. That's better. Do you know what? I don't think I need to do a lot more than that. It's much brighter in the photograph, but I'm scared that if I actually start sort of colouring it in, I'm going to be in trouble. She's got a bit of an angle to the back of her neck, mind you, which I think needs softening and needs taking out. That's better. And then coming uh, out here, that sort of needs to come to a stop. And then this needs to sort of looks a bit more like she's got pigtails, actually, rather than necessarily a ponytail. But I'm, I'm not worried about that. It is what it is. What I'm more concerned about is getting the starts and stops of things uh, sorted. And then I think we can go to town a little bit more down here with um, kind of suggestions of, of hair. That's okay, I quite like that. Um, I'd like to put, shall I put this in? Actually, let's do it in pastel pencil. I want to delineate between her neck and this fabric of whatever it is that she's wearing. Uh, what have I done with it? There you go, too many things in my hand. So let's uh, smudge that out as well so that we get that sort of softer uh, look. That's better. Kind of cuts it up a bit more like that. So we're right in the finishing touches uh, now. Uh, I'm trying to, I've got my, you know, my little inner faffing monitor is screaming at me right now. But, um, oh. <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to see. This is the sort of picture where you kind of need to, uh, to prop it up and step away from it and see if you need to add any more to it. Um, that is going to be a whole other discussion for another day for me. Um, it'd be, I would love, if you are watching this live, I would love to know your thoughts as to whether you think I should stop or push it further. Um, everybody's point of view is valid. You don't ever have to. If someone gives you the suggestion for what you should do with the painting, you don't have to follow it. Um, it's just nice to see and to hear what other people's opinions are. So if you think I should stop and step away from it, I'd love to know. If you think that I need to push it a bit further, then say that as well. I, I will make a choice. Um, let's get a bit of that kind of hair cascading down over the front. You can see now, I hope, why I didn't want to put that hair coming out uh, from underneath her nose. What I can do, and this is kind of um, is back to what Trudy was asking, is to do that little bit of editing in there just to sharpen up some of it so let's put that going in under there and uh 
So Anne is saying that um, she's pleased that this is an example of where you don't replicate the photograph, but uh, use the photograph as a basis for the picture. Yeah, Anne, I couldn't agree more, actually. You don't need to, you accept this as a photograph, so your brain tells you that all the little minutiae that's going on in here should be there because it is a photograph. Whereas when you start to interpret something as a painting, you don't necessarily need to put it all in. Um, and a couple of you are saying to me that it's looking uh, really ethereal. So do you know what? I am going to leave it there. I'm not going to push it uh, too much further because uh, I don't want to spoil it. This is certainly something that I would prop up in the corner of the studio and uh, leave to fight another day. It probably does need a little bit of extra detail here and there, but I don't think that that's something I can necessarily assess right now. I am really pleased that I managed to uh, get a realistic uh, looking face, a kind of realistic portrait that it is kind of experimental, which is the whole point of what's going on this month with my classes. And hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight as well as to uh, how you can combine gouache and pastel together. So uh, thank you uh, so much for joining. Don't leave yet. Um, I've got a, a couple of things uh, to share with you. Uh, here's one of the first things to share with you. If you would like to learn more about this, I have an online workshop coming up. There's still uh, one, maybe two places uh, coming up where we're doing, we're spending a whole day together on Zoom. Uh, looking at portraits and this is the photograph that we are going to uh, be interpreting all in soft pastel I'm really looking forward uh, to that one and don't forget uh, let's uh, get rid of that bit and let's pop that one up don't forget that uh, no matter where you are on the internet whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Facebook or Instagram just put at Alibord Artist into Google and you will find me in lots and lots of places now the most important part I have to pick up my little prompt card the most important part is that uh, Technic Tuesday will be back again on the 6th of June. That is uh, where um, you'll find me next in terms of Technic Tuesday. And our theme for the month of June is stairs, steps and archways. So very different from what's going on this month, looking at perspective, uh, looking at texture, looking at much more mixed media. And on the 6th of June, I will be doing a demonstration called Secrets of an Ancient Castle. And we're going to be looking at uh, a really interesting uh, look through a very old uh, medieval archway, trying to recreate that texture, a little bit of perspective thrown in there for good measure too. Now, like I said, uh, if you want to leave me a comment, please do. If you're watching on Catch Up, it can go in the YouTube comments. It can go over on my blog. But uh, thank you ever so much for joining me this morning. It's been really fantastic uh, to have you with me. I hope that that's uh, inspired you to have a go too. Don't forget to share anything that you do over on social media. Just tag me in it at Alibord Artist. Good luck with your experiments. Good luck with any portraiture that you do. Take lots of care of yourselves and I will see you very soon. <laughs> bye bye people. Bye.